Hi, Dale Titus here with today's two minute bass lesson. Um, you know, I took a chance uh, a couple weeks ago and posted a lesson uh, on how to apply arpeggios by playing a progression on my bass, a chord progression, and giving you guys a set of assignments to play against it. Uh, and honestly, I wasn't sure how it would go over, so I asked your opinion and I was overwhelmed. It's probably the most emails I've received about any um, given lesson was that you guys like this and that you want me to continue on. So I aim to please. We're here with applying arpeggios number two. Um, since this is really the beginning of learning how to improv and build bass lines off of chord symbols, I encourage you to download the chart. Um, so go to www.mtdkingston.com, the bass company that uh, provides these lessons to you, and go to the zone section in the menu bar, find bass lessons, and in the right hand column you'll see all the written materials for these videos. And this one is called Applying Arpeggios Unit 2, probably just number 2 when it's posted. Um, so we're going to be uh, using seventh chords in this one. Last, line, it was, last time it was all triads, and this time it's seventh chords. And I'm going to give you some assignments that I want you to play against it. Um, the progression starts with an E major chord, E major seven chord to be exact, to an F sharp ma minor seven chord, to a G sharp minor seven chord, and back down to the F sharp minor chord. Now, um, for you theory heads out there, you probably recognize that the E is the one chord, the key is E major. And then I play the two chord in that key, which is F sharp minor. I play up to the three chord in that key, which is G sharp minor. And I go back to the two chord. So it's three chords that are very comfortably nestled in the key of E. Uh, so what are you going to do? I'm going to ask you in uh, assignment number one, you're going to see play a quarter note bass line using the following template. The root on beat one, whatever third applies on beat two, whatever fifth applies on beat three, and the last beat is whatever seventh. So basically I'm asking you just to practice applying the arpeggios, learning what the shapes are. So with E major, um, and I gotta say, a lot of times students when it comes to E, they jump right up to the seventh fret E because they can see the pattern. So root, major third, perfect fifth, major seven. I want to encourage you to know both ways. That you also can play it with the open E. Now the shape does not look the same, so that's why I think guys shy away from it. So just memorize this pattern. The root is open, the, the third is a G sharp, and that's the fourth fret on the same string. Then you play the B on the second fret on the A string, the D sharp on the first fret on the D string, and then the E. So that's how you execute an E major 7 arpeggio with an open E string. So obviously if we were using that, we'd play the first beat is root, second beat is the third, the fifth, and then the seventh. Now when it, the chord changes to F sharp minor, you would play the F sharp with your index finger, the minor third, because it is a minor chord, so we have to play that third perfect fifth and the minor seventh. Go up to the G sharp, play the minor third, the perfect fifth, the minor seventh, and then go back down and play the F sharp again. Okay, so that's assignment number one. And play it to the tempo I'm going to set, but then when you practice at home, try to see how fast you can play it and see if you can incorporate other positions. Do it up in more of the soloing register, move around, see if you can find every, uh, every position that you can play these chords in and then play them against the time. Uh, assignment number two has you go root to the octave, seventh, and fifth. So you're going to play root, in this case against the E chord, you play the low E, play the high E, the major seventh, and the perfect fifth. Then you play F sharp, the octave, the minor seventh, the perfect fifth, the G sharp, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of a cool pattern. And then lastly, I just want you to play the arpeggio backwards. They look different backwards, and they're really, um, if you only practice root going up, you're only half a bass player. You need to make sure you can play from the octave and descending. So in this case, on the E major, you'd start on the E, then the major seventh, the perfect fifth, the major third, the octave of F sharp, go to the minor seventh, the perfect fifth, the minor third, and so on and so forth. And then lastly, it says play an eighth note bass line using the template root three, five, seven, octave, seven, five, three. So all you're doing is going down, up, down. And that would be like this. Now this is just a discipline, I'm just a discipline in this case of being able to execute these templates against these chords. Ultimately what I really think the extra credit should be is that you improvise. Uh, if you're interested in jazz, put on a jazz beat if you have a drum machine or just kind of you know get that swing feel with your metronome and just practice walking these arpeggio tones, you know, connecting uh, each chord. Uh, if you're into rock, try to find a way to make each one groove, you know, um, but the idea is playing only chord tones. Break out of that muscle memory where you like to use scale tones and pentatonic licks. Play only the chord tones because we're also training your ear to hear them. So without further ado, let me play the progression so that you guys can practice along and hear some chords. 
So I've set the metronome to 80 beats per minute, and I'll play along. I'll count us in, and then uh, you guys can start jamming. So start on the E. One, two, ready, go. So there you have it. Hopefully you can play along with that. Hear the notes that you're playing, um, how they match up to my chords. Of course, if you have a friend who plays guitar, I included on the chart the guitar uh, chord fingerings. So they are, you know, maybe they can play along. You guys can uh, jam. Um, and if you have a looper at home, you can learn the chords by watching my fingerings or download the chord chart that's posted on the MTD Kingston site and play them yourself. I think you'll find that it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to just get really comfortable with your chord tone playing. All right, well, let me know if you like that one or if you have any questions. If there's something I can do to, to make it better, I would love to hear from you guys. So email me at dalet at danabegoods.com. Thanks a lot.